Now that we know about changing the port's path cost, we're going to refine it and use it for a great feature, certainly not on by default, but it's load, bal load balancing, I should say, on a per VLAN basis. Because when we use the cost command, it's an all or nothing deal. The port cost for every VLAN is changed to whatever value we put in. We put in nine in the last video and we got the expected result. But what if we want to change the cost for some VLANs while leaving it alone for others. What I did during the break is I did a write erase on the switches. We still have the same route, of course, that being switch one, and we will double check the ports. But now we have VLANs 10, 20, 30, and 40 in the mix. And right now, of course, what's gonna happen if we have the same config we had in the last video, same defaults? All the traffic is going to go over the trunk connecting the fast 11 ports on the switches, and the other path is just sitting there. And we're thrilled to have the redundancy. We're thrilled to have the backup path, but we hate wasting that bandwidth. And we hate wasting you know, the other path. You know, It's not as efficient. So what we want to do is configure the switch so that VLANs 10 and 20 will continue to use the top path, the path through fast 11 on each switch. But VLANs 30 and 40 are going to use the bottom trunk, fast Ethernet 12 on both switches. And this is per VLAN load balancing. It's not perfect load balancing because we can't make the assumption, okay, we have four VLANs besides the default, uh, and you know each one is going to be using 25% of the bandwidth. That's probably not going to happen. But you do your network analysis, you see which ones you need to move to another path, and you do it, and this is how you're going to do it. So let's go ahead and bring up the live equipment here. Going to be a little a tad askew there. So we've got our VLANs. And I'll just go ahead and run a show VLAN brief, make sure make sure nothing happens since the last time I looked. And there they all are, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40. And right now we know the deal. Let's run show spanning VLAN 10. We're on switch to the non-root. And we know this is going to be the non-root for every VLAN because we left everything at the default. So the election process is going to have the same result every time. We also know that port 11 is going to be the forwarding one. Port 12 is going to be the blocked port. So what we're going to do this time, instead of the all or nothing deal, is fix this so that port 12 becomes the root only for VLANs 30 and 40. It's pretty cool stuff. We'll see if it works. I'm sure it will. Let's go to fast 12. So the command is a little bit different because we're not going to do spanning cost this time. What we're going to do is spanning VLAN. And then we could put our range in here and we're going to put 30 comma 40. And then we have cost and something called port priority here at the end. So we're going to change an interfaces per VLAN spanning tree path cost. We're going to set that to cost and then of course we have to put something in. So we'll stick with nine like we did last time. And there are no other options. Let's try VLAN 10. And for VLAN 10, you can see the ports are staying exactly where they are. No port is going through transition for VLAN 10 because we left that one alone. Same thing for VLAN 20. We didn't change a thing. Port 11 is still going to be the root. Port 12 is still going to be the alternate port. And there's no transition because nothing has changed. But where we did change the cost was for VLAN 30. And you can see already, we know immediately from the last video, we know that port 11 went into blocking mode immediately. Port 12 became the root immediately. And it's in learning status right now. So let's check out 40. And you can see it's already finished. So for VLAN 40 now, we changed the cost. And now it's the root port. Let's go back to 30. That is pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. So there we go. Cost of 9. It's now the root. Port 12 is now the root. For VLANs 30 and 40. But for VLANs 20 and 10, they stayed exactly the same because we didn't change them. So again, nothing wrong with using the cost command like we did in the previous video. If it was, I wouldn't have shown it to you but it's an all or nothing deal. If you want to do a little per VLAN load balancing with the cost command, then you use spanning VLAN cost and you can get that done. Let's call that command up though. Interface fast 012. 
And we had uh, two options here, right? We have change in interfaces per VLAN spanning tree path cost. And we have port priority, change in interfaces spanning tree port priority. I'm going to show you how to use that command to do the same kind of load balancing on the very next video. I'll see you there.